Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertur, consultant audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the wax scope, but also partway through, I also reverted back to uh, our flagship product, the iClearScope Endoscope, before then reverting back to the wax scope. Now, this is a really complex case. This patient last attended in 2021, and prior to that, they attended in 2016, I think. And on both previous occasions, I did ask this patient to come on a yearly basis or even two years, because on each um, separate appointment, it was really difficult to remove this from their left ear. And I think in 2016, I had to have a couple of attempts. So uh, the patient had to return because it was really, really difficult. Now, the reason for the difficulty is mainly due to the consistency of this plug. It's got at the core a very clay-like consistency, which is probably my least preferred type of uh, consistency of earwax to remove. But also at the base of the ear canal and also the anterior canal wall. So this is the patient's left ear. So uh, the left-hand section of the ear canal, there's very, very strong skin adhesions. And you'll, you'll see that as we progress to the video. In addition, they've got a very narrow, bendy ear canal. And if you watch right till the end, you'll get a perspective on that. So once there's, their ear is cleared fully, um, you'll see me entering the ear and you'll have a better perspective of how bendy uh, the ear canal is. And the entrance is quite, oh, it was very narrow, whereas the midsection and the medial part towards the eardrum was more uh, of a, a normal sized ear canal. Um, now, with this type of wax, it's difficult to suction because it's very hard to get a suction grip. Um, you saw me use the right ear hook and it just sliced through it. And then I used the correct, but although the correct is helping, and eventually, uh, I mean, I think the majority of this I removed with the correct in the end. Uh, but because of this consistency, it's almost like thick lard or butter. So as, as I'm scooping it out, although I'm getting pieces out, um, simultaneously, a lot of it I'm almost spreading to the floor of the ear canal, just like I've done here. Um, so I've just put some olive oil spray just to lift this that uh, piece of wax that I've spread, which came away very easily. But it's this section you can you can see that keratin that's enveloped this wax plug. That's the, so the keratin there is that white reflection that you can see, and it's also here. So keratin is a protein found in the dead skin cells. The the outermost layer of the epidermis called the stratum corneum. And it's made up of um, squamous um, keratinous epithelial cells, which the term um, squamous just means the skin cells are flat, uh, like a, pan a pancake really. Whereas the skins in the deeper layers, uh, the skin cells in the deeper layers of the skin is more cuboidal. So as the skin, um, is forced up the different layers of the, the skin itself, they change their shape from a cuboidal shape to a flat um, pancake uh, type of uh, sh uh, shape. So um, in, in fact, the term squamous, I think the Latin translation is a fish scale. So that's another way of describing it. And with keratin, it's very reflective, hence where you can see it's quite shiny and glossy. Um, because the light is reflecting off it. Um, so we're just past the first bend. So this plug is, it, it's really a dead past the first bend. And what I'm trying to do here is stretch open the first bend. You can see the flesh to the right, that's the first bend. I'm trying to just get the specular to widen that. And I've just gone to the posterior canal wall. I'm using the right correct again. And I am getting sizable chunks. Again, I've got a, a really good still image at the end of the video. And beside all the wax, I've placed uh, a pen, so the tip of the pen, just for some, uh, so you can have a better perspective of how much we took out. So I'm really leveraging this out, and again, some of it I've got out, but some of it I'm spreading against the floor of the ear canal. You can see there's quite a few hairs on the um, the back section of the first pen. That's the region of the ear canal where you typically find most of the hairs or at least the hairs that protrude outwards so the outer third of the ear canal the cartilaginous portion uh, is 
the skin is made up of three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. And it's in the dermis layer where you find the, the, the hairs, um, the roots of the hairs and the hair follicles. Um, for that reason, you won't find hairs in the inner two thirds of the ear canal, the bony part, because the bony part of the ear canal is only lined with the epidermis layer of skin. So there's no dermis layer, therefore there's no hairs. Now, nearer to the entrance of the ear canal, the hairs protrude outwards. They're almost like, like a guard. They're designed to prevent from bodies from entering the ear. And as we approach the end of the cartilaginous portion, these hairs are, are more aligned horizontally, uh, more flat against the canal wall. So I'm really, really leveraging this up. So this is when I reverted to the endoscope. Um, and see, the, the view is completely different now. Um, they've both got their pros and cons. Of course, I still think, by far, the endoscope is in a league of its own just because of the wide field of view. But I actually found, using the wax scope in this patient's ear, a bit easier. Um, and I'll explain why during the procedure as you'll, as you'll continue to watch. Um, so again, I'm just trying to separate it from the floor of the ear canal here. And you can see there's a thick blanket of dead skin that's really tough. And this skin is, it acts like double-sided sticky tape. It's not only is it stuck to the canal wall, it's stuck to the wax plug itself. Now, this is probably one of the reasons why the wax gate worked really, really well here. So what I'm trying to do is insert the correct on the back part of the ear canal. But because the ear canal was really narrow and bendy at the entrance, it was very difficult to get the correct position with the correct in and behind. Now, also, at this stage, the endoscope is not resting against any part of the ear. So I'm actually holding that in my left hand, um, unsupported. So you will see it shake occasionally for that reason. Now, when we're deeper in the ear, you, we, I use the endoscope against the canal wall, I can rest it. But at the moment, it's actually not making contact. Um, it's in midair. And then obviously with my right hand, I'm trying to manipulate this. So I've got the right ear and the front part of the ear canal. I've lifted, separated a lot of it. You can see that really thick skin. And as I'm scooping this out, I'm rotating the correct, trying to leverage this out of the ear. So with the wax gate, what was really uh, good was that I could really stretch the ear open and it gave me better access to the back part of the ear canal where I'm now. So although I did separate some of it from the posterior canal wall, there's still a hell of a lot more. Um, wax and dead skin there. Now, if I got the patient to pull their ear back, or if I had an assistant do that, then actually the endoscope might have been a bit better in this case, but um, the patient themselves wasn't able to pull their ear back to stretch it open to give me access to the back part, and also uh, I didn't have any assistant to, to help me, so... Um, now, it's very seldom I need to get a patient to pull their ear back. Probably one in two, I'm just thinking out loud, but probably one in 200 possibly. Um, so most patients, even if they've got a very bendy, narrow, twisty ear canal, I'm able to open it up using the endoscope and then enter with the instrument. But this was more of a challenging case to do that. So I, I went to the forceps and I will in a moment go back to the wax scope. I just found it as the ear was more accessible with the with the uh, with the correct in particular. If I was just performing microsuction, I would have just would have continued. Now I've put loads of all at different stages during the procedure. You can see just this really hairy ear canal. Now I think I mentioned in yesterday's video, the one before, um, about what I can do with the hairs, and I previously mentioned I've used some blunted, curved, um, round-nosed trimmers, manual trimmers, scissors, and also use electri electronic trimmer, but they weren't very helpful. But um, I've just ordered some micro scissors. So now these micro scissors are actually, um, from what I can tell, and I'll receive them tomorrow, um, exactly like the micro forceps that I used, like I just used in the procedure. 
but instead of the jaws at the end, you've got um, scissors. So I'm going to see if they're any good at trimming some of the hairs. It's not so much of an issue with the endoscope. Now, obviously, um, there's a few hairs there because the endoscope's positioned out of the ear at the moment. Uh, once you go, if the wax is deeper and I can put the endoscope further in, then you won't really see the hairs. But just with the wax scope and sometimes with the speculum, the hairs are a bit deeper in the ear. Now, the wax scope has got a specular, so it's, uh, when you use microsuction with um, a microscope or head loops, you've got um, a specker to push some of the hairs, but if the hairs are a bit deeper, you can't actually see them. Now, this is when I revert back to the wax scope. It's a completely different view, but you can see here, I'm able to widen the back part. And just to give you um, uh, the full picture of the, of the procedure, before I reverted back to the wax scope, I actually used my head loop. So I have got some head worn um, microscope and I thought, let, just, let me just give it a go, um, see, see if that helps. But I attempted it for about five minutes and it was just really, it was really, really difficult if I'm truth be told. Now, it might just be that I'm not very skilled using head loops, but once you've used uh, an endoscope or the wax scope or an ENT microscope, loops are very, relatively easy to, to kind of perform procedures with because um, you're basically, are the ones I've got anyway, um, they are mounted glasses and you just peer through um, but I was finding that I was having to really crouch forward with my head to to even get the magnification. Even then, the magnification wasn't great. And I could just see a bit of wax, uh, what you can see here. But I wasn't able to really see the canal wall, as you can see there. Um, and I was just with the sucker, just trying to just, without much technique, really, just kind of going around in circles, trying to loosen it. But I then... I did stick at it for a few, quite well, about five, ten minutes. Well, it probably wasn't ten minutes, but about five minutes. But then I just reverted back to the wax gate. So with the wax gate, obviously, the view is much more magnified. Um, but in compared to the endoscope, you don't get that field of view. And the reason for that is with an endoscope, the lens is actually situated more often than not inside the ear. So you can, uh, and an endoscope has got a, a negative lens at the tip which helps give it its wide panoramic field of view but when you use the wax scope or an ENT microscope or the head worn microscope the the lens is external so the field of view is kind of irrelevant because you won't be seeing the field of view inside the ear because the lens is outside of the ear you'll just be seeing the peripheral part of the outer part of the ear um so yeah, it's a different complete view, and yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm the, the endoscope view when you're visualizing the ear because it's a wide field of view. It's like you're inside the ear itself. But this is where I think the wax scope really came up trumps. So I just felt more comfortable actually um, reverting back to the wax scope, and because of the high magnification, we we can really go up close to the canal wall in comparison to the loops. And to, to then access different parts of the ear, I'm using my um, my left hand, the wrist, where I'm holding the wax scope. And I'm just wrote, flexing my wrist, basically, angling the wax scope at different areas and different um, trajectories to see different parts of the ear canal when I'm switching from one side to the other. So here's the front part of the ear canal. And you see if we're getting slowly, but surely the skin... And I've just gone to the back, so I've just changed the angle. And we're seeing more and more now um, of the ear canal. I'm just working at the top of the ear canal here. You can see some skin around the roof. So um, I've left on this patient's notes the next time they call. And the patient did say that will come again in a year or two, but um, based on past experience, they probably won't. But um, I've just asked uh, my clinic manager when booking this patient in just to, and, and the patient, um, it was the same this, this time, either book before my lunch break or at the end of the day, just in case I run over, because I always know this left ear is going to be really, really tricky because of the consistency, the density of this, how hard it is to vacuum. I'm just giving it little wriggles to separate that skin from the top. And as I am, you can see some of it's teared away. 
So from a viewing perspective, so uh, I totally get um, the endoscope for entertainment purposes and for the whole round view. Again, it comes up trumps, but I think this procedure really highlights to me um, where the, the wax get can be really, really helpful. And obviously from an audiologist perspective, a specialist perspective, my main objective is to get this, this wax out. Um, and for me, in this occasion, being able to dilate the ear canal, having this extra magnification and having the ability to insert the instruments where I want to. And that's the manual instruments. It really came out on, uh, came out on trumps. And it would have been great if I was able to record the view that I took I had with loops just as a comparison basis but of course I can't record that I can perhaps simulate it which I'll try and do next time and it's slowly coming forwards I'm just trying to squeeze this section so as I said at the beginning of the video the entrance is quite narrow but once you get past the second bend, the ear canal widens now. This isn't keratosis as optrans. It may appear like it is, but it's not. Um, the patient had no ultalgia, no ear pain. There was no um, global widening of the ear canal. So the ear canal was anatomically wide in the sense that that's just their anatomy. With a keratosis as optrans, you get remodeling of the bony part of the ear canal. And it's very apparent that's been remodeled as opposed to the patient's natural ear anatomy. And with keratosis as optrans, it's purely a dermal dead skin plug. This is actually, the majority of it is, is, is earwax, but it's just the periphery where the skin, So the, and the reason why the skin's there is it can't naturally migrate and shed because of the wax, so it adheres itself to the wax. So in a moment, I'm going to revert to the right correct. So this is the floor of the ear canal. So this is the view that... Um, um, an ENT would have when they perform surgery using a microscope, albeit they have um, a 3D view. I'm looking at a 2D screen, so their view is binocular vision. So in that respect, it's slightly different. But in terms of the magnification and the, the kind of narrow view, this is what you'll get. Now, another benefit of the wax scope is, and it, it can work both ways, we've got an opening on the specular and at the top, which allows me to really gain access in the top part of the ear canal because there's a piece of the specular missing so I can see that but obviously uh, top of the ear canal there's always a few hairs there so with when I was using the specular with the, the hair loops um, when I was tilting the specular up because it was a normal specular where there's no slot it would be very difficult for me to not impossible but very difficult to kind of get into the the gap at the top of the ear canal but because you've got this opening that part is 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 kind of uh, accessible so again, the correct came up trump, so I'm going to get this out in one big lump now. And this lump was huge, and you'll see that you, you won't see it, uh, it won't be noticeable on screen per se, but at the end when you see the still image. So it's going to enter the ear, I'm going to stretch the ear open, and going to get the focus. I'm going to just reduce the brightness a little bit now. That's the hammer bone. It looks slightly abnormal in some respects, like a normal looking, but... There's probably got some remodeling of the hammer bone due to the eardrum being retracted. But yeah, that's that big plug on the left, top left, that I removed at the end of the video using the right correct. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, and you kind of learned a bit more about the differences and pros and cons of the wax scope and the eye Take care. Bye.